Hi everyone, Cherries here, bringing you another Plan With Me video. We're drawing close to September, so it's time to set up our new monthly bullet journal spreads. September is a special month for me, so I'm really excited to show you my layouts and ideas. So grab your bullet journals and let's jump right into my September 2023 bullet journal setup. I'm working on my Archer and Olive dot grid notebook. I've been using watercolors a lot in my illustrations and it's no different this month. Over the time, I just really find myself more confident using this medium. But like always, you're not limited to using watercolors to recreate these paintings. You're allowed to use any of your favorite coloring tools and give these a try in your own style. So for my September theme, I decided to go for mushroom picking. I had so much fun painting different mushrooms in my latest watercolor tutorial video that I posted a couple weeks ago. It was definitely a good warm up for me. I attached some washi tapes here to keep the margins clean and straight. Then we're starting to paint our cover page. The image I wanted to paint here is a girl holding a basket full of mushrooms. I'm pretty much using the existing mixes on my palette that I used from the tutorial, but I will be flashing the specific colors on the screen. Let's focus on painting the foreground elements beginning with the mushrooms. We're using a mix of white and brown to create a beige color for the base of the stems and yellow ochre for the mushroom caps. Once we're done with the base layer, we're adding the shadows with this Van Dyke brown mixed with a lot of water, creating a light consistency and just painting where I think the shadows should be. Since our theme is mushroom picking, we want to paint the mushrooms that still has some soil surrounding them. So we're taking more pigment of the Van Dyke brown and gently dabbing the tip of the brush to create these small spots and messy strokes. Then we can go back to add more texture to the stems with a medium consistency of the same color. Now we'll work on adding the extra layers on the mushroom caps to build the textures. We're using burnt sienna around each cap leaving the center slightly lighter and then dark brown on top. Unlike using a watercolor paper, we can't do a wet on wet technique on this kind of paper. So we're slowly adding the layers, making sure each layer dries up completely and I also moved the brush quite a lot here to distribute the pigments, creating more texture. So I highly recommend watching my latest watercolor mushrooms tutorial so you can compare the painting on a good quality watercolor paper versus this journal or notebook paper. Alright, we're also painting some leaves and red berries around the mushrooms. Likewise, we're painting the initial layers with light colors of red and green. Then we're adding the shadows of the leaves toward the stems and of the berries by painting the contours of the shape, leaving the center light. Then it's time to paint the basket. We're using raw umber to paint the base and burnt sienna for the details.
Now this is where it becomes tricky because the scale of our illustration is small and so does the details so it was a tedious part to paint especially when I'm trying to keep the pattern as clean as possible because the weavers on each column are placed alternately so sketching this out first with a pencil is a great way to somehow save ourselves from confusion. <laughs> Using a small detail brush can be helpful too, but if you happen to have a similar round brush as mine, using the tip with a very light pressure and not loading the brush too much with water will do the job just fine. Then we'll just paint the inside of the basket with more shadows using black to add depth. Next, we're painting the hands starting with the same beige mixture. Then we're adding a hint of red to the knuckles, fingers, and wrists. But I think I could have added a little bit more pigment because they dried up pretty lightly and ended up being covered by the brown color that I used for the shadows. But the end result is not that bad either. Just making sure the shadows in between the fingers are darker and the soft features can stay a bit blurry. Hands can be a challenging subject but they are worth practicing especially if you want to learn painting characters and gathering photos as references are always useful. Our foreground elements are done, now we can move on to painting the background. We're painting this pleated apron. I wasn't sure what color I wanted for it but I ended up with this brownish purple. So we painted the whole shape of the apron with the lighter tone. Then she's also wearing a yellow dress that is slightly visible behind the apron so we're also painting the base layer for that already. Next in this process is adding in the shadows which is an important step to bring illusion of dimension. So slowly work from the upper center. I like to begin with thin lines to determine where I want the folds to be, then adding some shading in between the folds while leaving some areas light. There are also some areas where the shadows are subtle using very light strokes. When you look at the real pleated skirt, or just fabric in general, you'll notice not only the highlights and shadows, there are also reflections of shadows in shadows. So for example here, there are shadows on the apron itself, then the shadows of the basket and the overlapping elements like the berries and leaves also reflect on it. So we're just pulling the value of our paint a bit more darker underneath the basket, as well as following its shape and kind of offsetting the shadows of the berries and leaves. At this point, I feel like I should have painted the leaves on the basket with a vibrant green to make them pop a little bit more. But anyway, we also added the dark areas on the yellow dress speaking behind the apron. And lastly, we have some little empty space at the back, so we're just filling those in by painting some blurry leaves with different shades of green. Our cover painting is now done. Let's move on to create our September calendar on this craft paper. This is an eventful month for me, so I will be needing a bigger yet simple layout by drawing these grid lines using a 08 black Pigma Micron and a brown Tombow brush pen to color the background for the days of the week. I wanted to have another mushroom illustration here, but instead of painting them, I decided to use this decorative paper with mushrooms on them 
and cut out the part that I like to have here. We're using lowercase wooden alphabet stamps for the September title on top and then we're writing a scripture below from Jeremiah 29:13, saying, You will find me when you seek me with all your heart. And at last, we're decorating the empty spaces with these strips of printed book pages. They are the same pages I used from my August bullet journal spreads and I thought they will go well too in this monthly setup. All right, that finally finishes our September cover and calendar spread. I really hope you like it. Again, you can always turn the playback speed into a slower rate if you like to follow the painting. We have flipped our way to our next spread where on the left, we're creating my monthly planning page. I printed this green paper to add as a background. I can simply just glue the whole thing instead of cutting the writing areas. But I honestly just thought of this idea because as much as I love seeing this notebook getting chunky and layering paper on my spreads, I want to be careful to keep the spine intact until the end of this year. Although it can be hard to measure them as equal as my outline on the page itself, I think this is a better way so I don't need to take pages from my other journals. Anyway, we also added the book page and a strip of dark brown paper on top for the title. Then I'll have my focus, goals, and video ideas sections below. On the other side of the spread, we're gluing this craft paper frame. Then we'll have a separate 200 GSM watercolor paper in almost the same size as the cutout on the craft paper, but with a half centimeter allowance. Let's attach it with washi tapes on an empty page for the meantime and paint our next illustration. I wanted to paint a top view of a square basket with a bunch of mushrooms inside. The first thing I notice in this perspective are the mushroom caps, so we start by painting the bigger ones with raw umber that are placed on top of the other mushrooms. Then a bit of a darker shade by adding some brown to the raw umber for the smaller mushrooms and gets darker for those that are placed deeper inside the basket. We also painted the stems with the same beige color. And after that, we can work on building the textures of the bigger mushrooms. I honestly think there's no right or wrong way to paint these mushrooms. Each mushroom definitely don't look exactly the same, so we don't need to be super accurate with these, but we'll just use the same colors and vary the shading and details to make them look freshly picked from the forest with some soil here and there. This is a 200 GSM mixed media paper, by the way, and is not the same quality as the Kensen XL watercolor paper that I used from my mushrooms tutorial, where you can see how beautiful the paints spread out on a wet surface. So here you can still see some harsh lines when the paint dries, unlike the Kensen paper that allows even tone easier to achieve. I just don't want to use a 300 GSM paper because this will be turning into an interactive habit tracker, so thick paper won't be necessary. But we can still work with our watercolors in this mixed media paper by pretty much doing the same painting technique we do on this notebook since the paint gets absorbed quickly here too. The bigger mushrooms are the important parts in this painting, so I focused more on them since those are where our trackers will be placed. But after painting them, we are also doing smaller ones where some with their gills and stems are facing upwards.
to add more color to this, we are also painting red berries and leaves scattered everywhere. The composition of this painting is quite messy and can be overwhelming, but the different shapes and sizes and random positions make it look interesting in my opinion. But if you like to have a more organized layout, you can just search freshly picked mushrooms on Google and there are many photos of organized mushrooms in a basket that you can combine and refer to as you create your own composition. My favorite part of this painting is definitely adding black on the white spaces for the shadows. And after painting this, I also replicated the big mushrooms on a separate mixed media paper and added stems and cut them individually. I painted the caps in full this time since I initially thought of cutting the white border, but I decided not to in the end. I followed the direction of the stem that is visible in this painting, but for those that are not, it doesn't matter which direction you want them to be as long as they don't bump into each other so not to make them get bulky on the inside. So yes, this is gonna be another slide out idea. It's like placing your freshly picked mushrooms in the basket. We're just cutting the areas where we can insert these mushroom habit trackers using an exacto knife. Make sure to do this on a cutting board or any board that you can ruin before attaching it on the page. We're stamping the title on top and we're finally done with my monthly planning and interactive habit tracker spread. Up next, we're setting up my first weekly spread for September. I'm gonna be using a Dutch Doodle layout again. I cut 4 pages since I'm also using the same layout for my devotional spreads. But first, let's decorate the borders with this book page design again and dark brown paper for my weekly titles. By the way, I'm using the same white gel pen to ink the letters on the stamps to mark them down on the paper since the ink doesn't transfer much and then just outline them again. I'll have my verse of the week just below the title and adding this vintage mushroom sticker for some decoration. I still have some of these Suatelier Design Days of the Week stickers that I used last month. I really like the simplicity and the colors. And using the brown cream color highlighter to draw these thick lines where I can write my daily tasks. I decided to add these craft paper with ripped edges on the corners of the spread and match the cutout from the book page borders. Then we can move on to setting up day one of my 5-day devotional plan called Created to be Creative from the Uversion app as always. We're gluing this green paper instead of dark brown for the title writing day one on top with my white gel pen as well. And simple sections for my devotional summary, scripture, and activity, which is included by the end of each day. So you can also plan your layouts by checking the samples from the app, and I will also link down the devotional plan that I'm taking this month if you like to try it out as well. Do you ever just want to go into the woods to hunt mushrooms with your favorite dress and comfy foraging boots? That is what I have in mind for this illustration next to my devotional pages. We have another basket of mushrooms to paint but let's do a different kind of edible mushrooms this time called chanterelles. Painting these tiny mushrooms again requires a detailed brush or the very tip of a small round brush we're painting the base with light yellow, then we'll go with a medium tone to paint the ones that shows the underside. We just want to make sure that we don't load our brush with too much water because as you can see, we're trying to leave some wavy edges light to represent the coiled flesh of the chanterelles as well as the stems. Then we'll paint the shadows inside the basket and to define the details and shape of the mushrooms more. Next is our little basket, we're using raw umber as our first layer, 
draw the tiny details with burnt sienna and finish it off with dark shadows. I was imagining an 18th century dress for this illustration and I wanted to go with olive green for the outer skirt and a beige color for the under petticoat. Likewise, we are adding the shadows to show the movement of the skirt using a darker shade of green. I basically just added some Van Dyke brown to the olive green paint. I find it helpful to draw imperfect lines first to form the creases and making the ones toward the front a bit wavy to illustrate the direction of the movement. Then we can add more shadows along the lines and blend them nicely to create some new ones. We also added darker lines to define the hemline and we're just doing the same principle to the underskirt. Moving on to the footwear, painted a pair of dark brown socks and leather boots using burnt sienna. I recommend looking at pictures of someone wearing shoes walking on an inclined surface. In this illustration, she's walking on a tree log. The log has this dry, scaly bark. I thought it's a challenging one to paint. But what we will do is to apply some light browns and make them streaky, it's okay. <laughs> we don't need to even them out and then take a darker shade of brown to add the details of the bark. We'll just keep them really messy and random. There are bigger and smaller imperfect shapes forming like a puzzle. Using this color, we add some shadows beneath the boots and under the log to give it dimension. Then I'm taking a very light consistency of brown to add a bit of a wash on top to make the color of the log warmer. Now we can work on the background with some greenery. I like to paint these loosely to keep our subject in focus. So we don't really need to be precise with the grasses and we'll also have blurry trunks of trees behind. When the painting is finished, we're adding this brown paper frame with a thicker cut below like a Polaroid picture. And that is where we're going to stamp into the word and the title of my devotional plan this month created to be creative in cursive font using a white gel pen. Okay, moving on to our last spread to set up are my September review and favorites pages. We're gluing these horizontal book pages with ripped edges on the top and bottom, a couple dark brown papers for the titles as well, and craft papers for my writing spaces on the monthly review page. We still have these mushrooms and butterfly design left from the decorative paper that we used for the calendar layout, so I thought it would be nice to use what's left to decorate this page. And as always, I'm writing some questions such as what am I grateful for, 
what did I do well, what I need to improve, my biggest lesson, small wins, and how can next month be better. Then I'll have my favorites of the month where I'm writing my favorite hobby, passage in the scripture, outdoor activity, food, song, and show using the same layout I had last month. Alright, we have an empty space here to do one last painting, which is quite similar to our cover page illustration. We'll have some brown mushrooms, a couple of them showing the gills on the center, then a little napkin on the inside, and some leaves for a nice presentation. I told myself I need to do a different design for the basket because the space is so small, I needed something easier, so I just painted a crisscross pattern. <laughs> then we're painting her arms and hands holding the basket. I kept my color palette for her apron and dress here, but I just switched them, but you can certainly go for different colors. We're painting a bit more of the upper part of the dress. It has puffed sleeves as well as a pair of leather boots. I immediately went to paint the greenery and fallen leaves and I only noticed the missing shadows on the lace part of the boots when I was flipping through, so I just added them off camera. And then the last thing we're gonna do here is add this green paper frame around the painting. Alright, that's everything for this mushroom picking inspired theme with autumnal vibes for my September 2023 bullet journal setup. I hope you enjoyed watching this plan with me video and inspired you as well for your own September spread layouts or for the coming monthly setups this autumn season. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more bullet journaling content from me. Thank you so much for watching, have a blessed and cozy month of September and I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye everyone!